Good evening. This is Doc Severson for the Theonite Report for Thursday, January 25th. Again, as I brought up on Tuesday, we have some big macro things happening here. So this is the 10-year note and interest rates are starting to rise and now have broken above this high. And also just from a charting perspective, we have this long descending channel that has now printed a higher low and broken above that descending channel. We also have the dollar index getting absolutely murdered this week because the administration says it's okay with a weaker dollar. And because of this, equities really don't know where to go. I think there's only so far they can go right now at just complete exhaustion as they've gone into uh, that euphoric parabolic tail. But one asset class is poised to make potentially a big, big move here. And I'm going to switch over to GLD. So this is gold, a gold ETF. Gold has been in a bear market now ever since it broke down below this pattern. And this was in early 2013. So we had a monthly consolidation pattern that broke down below this. We easily hit 20% correction. Now what's happening is and this is where we go into our chart patterns and I don't see this one all that often but guys this is an ascending triangle pattern we have a series of approximately equal highs and a series of higher lows all the way up here so this is a an ascending triangle pattern now I was not sure how this whole thing was going to turn out because after this little bounce, this could have been nothing more than just another monthly lower high setting up and then heading down in this direction. But a higher low printed and that set us on the warning that this could be something where the polarity actually changes back up to the upside. And this could be very, very fast if there's a lot of bears that got into this way too late in the pattern. So I would watch this 130 level in the meantime. Now, what I would anticipate is that there's going to be a little bit of a bar fight around that 130 level. So what I have typically seen on what I consider to be obvious breakout levels like this is that somebody will make an attempt, they will bum rush the door, and then get tossed out again back into the pattern. So we'll have maybe perhaps a couple of these false breakouts from 130. Usually these don't break out until everybody gives up on the breakout and then all of a sudden it goes away. Now, there is something to be said for this level of exhaustion. So this has already come off the bottom real strong and it's into exhaustion right now. So that actually would make sense. Exhaustion also on the daily chart. That would make sense to see this consolidate and set up with a small flag here over the next week or two, perhaps maybe even a little longer than that and consolidate, build up that energy, and then that may support just a, a, a very strong breakout eventually from this level. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about ascending triangle patterns, again, this is a little bit more art than science, I would imagine, although Thomas Bolkowski has actually provided numbers behind this and probabilities. But typically what you do is you take the open end of the triangle and let's just say, just to keep things easy here, let's just say this is about a 30 point open end of the triangle. This is going to be the upper target for this breakout. So it's about a 30 point move in GLD. That's a pretty strong move. So that turns out to be about a 23% bump if it were to get there. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. I don't like to predict the future or anything like that. I'm just saying the probabilities are that if it does break out from here, and I do like the pattern from this, then there are studies that show that typically it will go to about the open end of the triangle. Now, one thing I like is combining technical analysis with probability analysis based on the expected move in the option chain. So if we go all the way out to this set of leaps, which is 17 Jan in 2020. So this is two years out. Two years out from now, the expected move is about 21 points with a 14% fall. So what this is telling you is that the market right now, the options market specifically, is looking at this saying, yawn, 
this thing's not going anywhere. It's never going to amount to much. What we give you is about a 20 point move over the course of the next two years. And so what they're saying is it's going to take two years. If it does go higher, it's going to take two years and it's only going to go up to about 150. Remember the expected move is saying that there is a 68% chance that it stays within this range, plus minus about 21 points. So my favorite trades are when the options market is disrespecting the pattern and doesn't believe in it, is very skeptical. So in other words, implied volatility is very low on this. And right now you would say GLD is actually fairly low in terms of the implied volatility. It's only 14%. So I like it when the, the options market is underestimating, in my mind, the forward projected move. Something else that we can look at here is silver. So silver has gotten even more smashed to the downside. So silver has just been completely crushed. It's not quite as clean a pattern from a technical analysis perspective, but it's certainly a lot less expensive underlying asset. So we can look at this and we can see the same kind of thing here. If we go out to silver and go out to the 17 Jan 20 leaps, it's only showing an expected move of plus minus 4.3 points. So again, we get back to the chart and we say over the next two years, four points of expected movement plus minus. So it is only giving silver a chance to get up to maybe 20 or so in the next two years. And this is specifically because there's no activity. There's nobody home right now. Everybody's asleep when it comes to silver. But you know what I know? Range contraction leads to range expansion. And the most explosive moves that I see are ones where we have a great deal of energy up here. Great deal of energy. A big bunch of energy here. This is where the explosive moves come from. This is where everybody's taking their eye off the ball. They're not watching it. And the options market is, in my mind, mispricing in the forward expected move of it. Because the options market doesn't look at the chart. It doesn't look at the potential for a move like this, like we do. So I would say this one's pretty compelling, whether or not you just want to sell puts or try to get long at some level on silver. Or what you can also do is, again, go into the options chain and even, uh, again, because of the fact that there's such a small expected move on here, implied volatility is relatively, you know, these are not that expensive. There's not that much extrinsic value on SLV leaps going forward because of the fact that the options market does not give this any respect in terms of its potential forward movement. So while everybody else is watching the interest rate markets, while everybody else is watching the equity markets and wondering what they're going to do next, I like to find these asset classes that everybody has forgotten about. Because again, to me, one of the most fundamental things that I found about the market is when markets coil like this, when they go to sleep like this, this is precisely when they're just about to move. Probably the best example I can think of this one is Baidu, which we were watching into last year and when it coils and coils and coils like this and just basically goes to sleep at all levels this is right before you get one of these ballistic moves and i think that we're going to see that in both gold and silver in the near term that's it for today's report thanks for listening we'll see you tomorrow